What is going on guys, DBG here and today we are going to be going over the top 10 players in NBA 2K22 my team that you guys can get for under 100,000 MT. So these are the best cards you can buy as of the 30th of December that you can get for a buyout. Like some of these guys are absolutely just incredible cards, some of them incredible value. But anyway, now we are going to get onto it. So honorable mentions before anything. Honorable mentions. Jamal Crawford is an honorable mention. Andre Kurelenko is an honorable mention. Marcus Smart and John Wall are honorable mentions. Blake Griffin, an honorable mention. Jaron Jackson Jr., honorable mention. But I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty okay with my 10. I'm pretty okay in my 10. So if you guys are new to the channel, subscribe. We're trying to 280,000 subscribers by the end of January. Right now we're about 3,000, 3,500 off. So it's going to be really, really close. And if you guys enjoy my team content, subscribe. We upload more my team content here than anywhere else. So lads, now we're going to get on to it. Again, no particular order here. Except, well, to be fair, number one is going to be the, the last player you're going to hear is going to be the best. So wait till the end. First player, we got Harden. We had James Harden Diamond. Like, still to this day, there are people that swear by this card as the best, best scorer in the game. And I'm not going to disagree with them that much. Because I love James Harden Amethyst. And you're looking at the price of this guy. You're paying in around 40k. Like, that, he is a steal. I'm sorry, but he is a, an absolute steal. Like, I would be very tempted to, get, to swap my two guard for Harden at some stage. Because Harden cooks 40,000 MT. Like, off rip. Comes with like Dead Eye, Volume Shooter, Lucky Number 7. But he gets like Gold Hyperdrive, Gold Quick Chain, Gold Posterizer, Gold Blinders, Gold Chef. Comes with Silver Limitless Spot Up, Gold Quick First Step. He's just shifty. There's something about Harden. He doesn't get blocked from dunks. I'm a huge, huge fan of James Harden. 91 3 ball. Um, good ball handle as well. Defense is pretty decent. Good speed. Good lateral quickness. And again, Honestly, if you got this Harden right here, he was so good for so long. Like, the fact that this guy literally came out, was it, like, weak? He came out in the first month of the game, and they're almost the same, except all the silver badges get bumped up to gold. But, uh, yeah, um, Diamond Harden definitely better than Amethyst Harden, and Diamond Harden definitely belongs. If there was a ranking, I mean, I mean, it's hard. These, are all, these cards are all so good. They are all so good. And then we're going to go for another two-guard. It's Wiggins. So Wiggins is a very similar price to James Harden. And for me, they offer different things. So it's really hard to say who is better, Wiggins or Harden. So with Harden, you've got like a shifty primary ball handler. And in Wiggins, you've got a absolutely elite lengthy defender. So like Andrew Wiggins is about 40k. Like they're both in and around the same price. The difference is with Wiggins is that he's 6'8 compared to 6'5. He's got a really long wingspan. He's got like limitless takeoff on strippable posterizer. Well, strippable is a pretty good one to have in fast switch. Again, fast switch is very, very solid for um for paint mashing if you need to. He's got like cat and shoot corner specialist, break starter, glue hands, interceptor, clamps, a pro touch, rhythm shooter, um, quick first step on gold. For me, basically, Wiggins is like a he's like a downgrade of Jimmy Butler. That's the best thing, way to put it. Like, if we're looking at like lengthy two guards whose job are to play great defense and also um, hit wide open shots. For me, like, Kawhi is a better Jimmy Butler and Jimmy Butler's a better Wiggins. But Wiggins at 40K, still brilliant. Like, he shoots well. His defense is immaculate. He's really tall for a two-guard. Great wingspan. Really fast with 90 lateral quickness. Like, again, you can argue him over T-Mac. You really can't argue him over T-Mac. But Wiggins is so freaking good. He's so good. And then we're going to still look at that two-guard wing position. We're going to start off with a couple of these guys. And then this is the offensive player. is Julius Irving. Dr. J, Pink Diamond. So, like, Dr. J's Pink Diamond card is a card that he's hovered in price. Like he was down at 70K at one stage, and now he's even higher. But Dr. J, you would think, like, knowing Julius Irving, how he played in real life, you would think, okay, he's going to be a really, he's going to be really fast He's going to move really well. He's going to be athletic. He's going to dunk on people. He's going to be a great defender. Well, he's a mediocre defender. 
But he's a shooter. Like, that is what he's there for. He is a shooter. He's got the Rudy Gay base. He's got Sniper on half. Limitless spot up on half. Doesn't matter. You're very rarely going to white anyway with him. He's got, like, Pickpocket, Pick Dodger on gold. Clamps on gold. Intimidator off ball pest. So, again, some solid defensive badge. He's got, like, gold downhill. Even though he should be a great dunker. I mean, he's not bad, but... Doesn't move that great. 6'6", six, six, but he's got a long wingspan. But again, great dunker, but the 94 three ball with that release is what really separates it. There are a lot of really good players that still use this guy. Even though his block interior high, I just haven't felt like he's been the greatest defender. Speed is a lie. He does not feel that fast. Lateral's okay. But yeah, like Dr. J, one of the best shooters in the game. Outside of Michael Red, probably the best just like wide open shooting wing in the game. So, a different type of player. A different type of player to a Wiggins, to a Harden. But with Wiggins, again, you've got the extra, you've just got the more length. So, Wiggins is a more lengthy defender. These guys all really play the two. Wiggins has more length and is the better defender. The better spot up catch and shoot player, Dr. J, and the best at creating is James Harden. Three completely different players. It's so hard to rank them in different spots because they pr they're so different, it's hard to do it. And then, after these three, we have just got, in my opinion, the probably the best wing defender in the game that I've used. And actually, no, probably one of the best, sorry, not the best wing defender, best on-ball defenders in the game that I've used. For me, ML Carr is still brilliant at that. I've used LeBron, but not enough that like I can see that, Le that LeBron has appeared like he's just his god-tier defender. Kawhi Leonard's been unbelievable. But this guy's in the conversation with those two guys. Scotty Pippen. And I'm not talking about in the conversation with those two guys in terms of leveling game, because they are both streets ahead of Scottie Pippen, in terms of just pure defensive ability. In terms of pure defensive ability, Scottie Pippen's diamond card is just ridiculous. So, I picked my one up when he was less than 10,000 MT. And again, I told you guys in Christmas, pick him up when he was that price. I don't even mind, like, it doesn't matter which one you get. If you want to get the 75th, go for it. They kind of do the same thing. Scotty can get pretty much every key badge in this one. But what you're getting with Scotty Pippen is you're getting a six foot eight small forward. He's got really good length. Again, really nice wingspan as well. Great player build. Hoff clamps defense leader, off ball pass, tireless defender, and Hoff Menace, which I'm telling you, lads, Hoff Menace might is one of the most important defensive badges in the game. Like it lowers. I'm not sure. It does it's one of the few badges that do different things in each gen. I don't know on next gen or current gen. On one of them, it lowers your defensive attribute or your offensive attributes. So if a player is being guarded by Scotty, their offensive attributes go down, or um, their badges go down. Like what perimeter? I can't remember what it used to be called, but it were, there was a badge you used to do that in old two guys. But um, it just depends on gens. It does different things about gens, and I'm not sure which is which. But he's got goal catch shoot, goal crunch special. Released, it's not terrible. Thirty's better this year than it's ever been. Thirty. I used to say thirty's one was an unusually bad release. I don't mind thirty at all. Um, interceptor on gold, which is good. Intimidator on gold. Downhill, quick first step is really, really great. He's 6'8", he has his own behind the back. He's got an 85 three ball, 85 driving dunk, decent ball handle, unbelievable defensive stats. 89 speed, 87 speed ball, 89 acceleration, 96 lateral. Like he is literally, for me, for me, he is half intimidated away from me saying he's better than, like me saying he's a lot better than Jimmy Butler. Like, if he had half intimidated, he'd be way better than Jimmy. I think he's slightly better. Like, but they're, they're neck and neck. Because Scotty does something's better, Jimmy does something's better. But they're neck and neck. If he had half interceptor, he'd be, in my opinion, close to being a top 10 card in this game. I mean, he's already not far off it anyway. I just love that Scotty card. I'm such a big fan of that Scotty. Then, we're going to start to look at some big men. So, first up is a center. And it's going to be George Mikan. So, George mikan has got everything. He does. I'm sorry, what does George Mikan not have? The guy's like 25, 30k. He had been down at 20k at one stage. Um, I picked up my my 75th anniversary one for 30k. But like he hovers in price. It's hilarious. He's every time there's like any sort of like mini market crash, Mikan goes down in price. Well actually reminds me, I have I have Mikan. Should I use him? I probably should. I've got I was like, I have John Collins. I completely forgot that I bought George Mikan. Because like, I'm thinking of my team, what I'm going to do with Cliff Robinson in the previous video. And I completely forgot I got, got George Mike in here. Um, but he's got downhill on Hall of Fame, posterizer, limitless takeoff, and grace under pressure. Like, again, people don't think these are good badges. They they are. They are decent badges, especially things like 
um, limitless takeoff and grazing the pressure. But he's got catch and shoot on gold, got like sniper on gold, brick wall on gold, got a big enough player build. He's got rim protector on gold, glue hands on gold. He's but he's also got like snipe things like sniper on gold, one of the best releases in the game. Um, he's got a solid three ball. Even though stats wise only eighty, he's gonna hit. He's gonna hit way more than you'd expect. Ninety five driving dunk. His ball handle is not the greatest, but he comes a fundamental dribble style and downhill. Put quick first step on the guy. Steal rating seventy five is fine. Perimeter defense isn't great. Block is decent. Interior is good. Good rebounding. Really good speed, ball, and acceleration. Really solid lateral for a center. Like, you give him, you don't even need to give him clamps, he's a center. Give him interceptor and give him, like, quick first step. And you've got one of the better centers in the game on your hands. In terms of pure offensively, like, you probably got the best, you got the best popper in the game. You know, I've got the best popper in the game. Like, I'm, I just love this George Mikan card. Like, again, a lot of people don't like George Mikan as much as I do, but there are a lot of people who do like George Mikan as much as I do. So, um... Yeah, he's. I had him at 13 in my or 12 of my best players list. I had him one spot ahead of Scotty, but he's he's brilliant. He's absolutely brilliant. Then we have gone. Again, a lot of people like to compare these two guys. I much prefer Mike in a center and Dolph a power forward. I don't think these guys are even comparable. Pink Diamond Dolph. A Pink Diamond Dolph was down at 40k at one stage. Like Dolph's obviously gone up quite a lot in price. Like you're looking, you're paying in the 60k range for him. And if you really want to get a good Dolph, you're gonna get the master version because his tendencies are a lot better. Plays lanes better. But like with Dolph, you're getting a 6-8 power forward with half catch and shoot, half rebound chaser. So that, that does help a lot. He's got a half corner specialist, half grace under pressure. He's not gonna miss from the corner. He's really not gonna miss from the corner. Got a really long wingspan. His 37 goals include range. And he's got like glue hands, intimidator, hook specialist, post move lockdown, worm. Um, got mismatch expert, so they put a giant player a power forward. He can trigger that. Dream Shake got sniper as well. 38 on quick with a really nice upper. He's an 88 three ball, 85 driving on good ball handle. Perimeter defense is bad, but his overall defense stats are good. Other than that, he's got really solid speed, speed on acceleration for power forward and good lateral quickness. Like how the hell did this card come out in October? I'm sorry if we're talking about ahead of their time, there may not be a card ever in my team outside like the Kembe that was more ahead of their time than Dolph like Dolph literally came out week two of season two like this car puts season two reward Blake Griffin to shame he puts season two reward Blake to shame from NBA 2k21 like this guy would would have been in he puts Wayne Embry to shame he puts completely puts Wayne Embry to shame and he was the second best center in the game on Christmas last year. He was the second best center in the game until Anthony Davis came out. Which was like the 15th of January. Unless you want to say Buggy was better than him. Because Buggy might have been. But Dolph, Lance. Dolph. There are cards that will kind of define certain eras of this game. There will be game defining cards this year. And I think Matumbo is a game defining card. And I think Dolph is probably the next card that I would call, if I was to make like a list of cards and where I put them in their tiers, I would put, like later on in the year, we're gonna be ranking cards based on relevance. I'm gonna put Dolph, Dolph will be in game defining alongside the Kevin Matumbo and probably David Robinson and Clay Thompson. Those four cards right now, I can guarantee you right now, at the end of the year will be in game defining. Nobody else, I don't think anyone else will, but those guys will define the game. Dolph was unbelievable then, still unbelievable now. And then, we got a bit of a different type of player. So, we got point center Draymond Green. So, Dolph is better than Draymond. Um, Draymond's better on defense, slightly. Dolph is a way better shooter than Draymond Green. Whereas, Draymond Green handles the ball really, handles the ball a lot better. And Draymond Green's like a point center, or a point power forward. He acts as a primary ball handler quite a lot. What? Um, dude, I saw my expensive Draymond Green for 19k. Okay, he's like 30k. I was 10k on my dream. My sell on my dream on. Wow, the market's really shot up. It's really shot up. But get this Draymond because he's got half dimer. Um, but he's got like defensive leader, intimidator, menace. So he's unbelievable on defense. Such a good power forward defensively. And he's got like blue hands, clamps, interceptor. Got a really good player build. Draymond's release is good. Quick first step. He's also got the Scotty behind the back, which is really important. He's got a good three ball. An 86 ball handle. 
which is good. He's got really solid defense stats. All of his st defense stats don't seem anything spectacular. They are really solid. Um, he's also got not great rebounding, but it's serviceable as possible. Solid speed, on acceleration, and good lateral quickness. It's just in-game. He's got that big player build. He plays defense at an elite rate. And also, if you are really struggling to get the ball past the halfway line, Draymond can act as a secondary ball handler, and he's a really damn good, pretty damn good one. I prefer Dolph, but there are certain situations where Draymond is the best power forward in the game. Uh, yeah, there are. There are, honestly, because he, you, that bail, that's, that behind, this guy hitting behind the back is bailout. Actually, no. The player that's... I got two more players left, and these guys are one and two. There's no numbers for the rest of them. But these guys are number two and number one. Number one is better than Draymond in every way. But um, we got Penny. So we got Penny Hardaway Diamond here. And this is, in my opinion, the 1A, 1B of point guards in this game. I think right now he's number one. I put Peyton ahead of him, but I'm put, I'm going back to Penny at number one. Reason, I'm going Penny number one. Like, my opinion kind of hovers, and my reasoning right now is switch everything. So, like, when Penny first came out, I knew he was good. Did not know how good he was. And as time went on, I was like, Penny's the best point guard in the game. Then I started using Peyton a bit more than Penny. I was like, you know, Peyton's that little bit better. But now, I'm like, okay. Okay, Penny's just Peyton's just better than Penny in a lot of ways, but in the switch everything meta of 2K, um, Pey Penny's a little bit better because even though I prefer Peyton, Peyton's movement, he doesn't mash like Penny. I prefer the way Peyton kind of moves around the floor. Um, I prefer a lot of things about Peyton. Um, his on-ball defense is better. Like his on-ball defense is definitely better than Penny's. The problem is, is that. A lot of it, you can't run the switch everything with Peyton on ball. It's so like, I've had to start putting Peyton off ball because of the way I play. Because of the way I start to play. And if you're playing them off ball, Penny's just the better card. Because Penny's taller. Like, stats-wise, Peyton's better. But what you're getting with Penny is you're getting really, really nice badges. So you're getting, like, floor general, needle threader. You're getting some solid defensive badges. He doesn't have clamps. He's not going to guard, but he can't guard ball, but he can guard everyone else. Then in terms of attributes... You're getting a decent three ball. His release is, it's easy to green. It's slow, but he's got a good driving dunk. Not the greatest defense stats, but he's got a decent steal and he plays lanes well. Solid speed. And again, he's a six, seven point guard. He's a lot better than um, than Magic Johnson, who I have completely forgot. And Magic Johnson is also in this 10. We are going to leave it to nine players. But Magic is just the tallest point guard in the game. He's a cheese ball. Like he is a cheese ball. I have considered so many times buying Magic. Like, Magic Johnson, that's, that's always one of my thoughts. I'm like, do I just buy Magic and Penny? Do I just buy Magic and Penny and just not play defense? And if you wonder what I mean by not play defense, like, I'm telling you, just do not. You don't even need to play defense with Magic Johnson on the floor. You change all your settings to switch everything, and you stand in the corner, and there's nothing they can do. There is nothing they can do. So Magic Johnson, again, he's got 10 half badges. He's an elite passer. He's kind of a liability on offense. He comes at, like, quick first step. Doesn't really come with that many defensive badges. But again, he doesn't really grab, doesn't really have to grab ball. He's gonna hit wide open shots. His dunking is meh. Passing is spectacular. His interior though is very solid. It's it's quite a bit better than Penny, and his rebounding is really good. Like when I use Magic Johnson, I normally put Magic Johnson at guarding the other team's power forward. So like a lot of times I use, like when I've used Magic, I use like an AK a power forward or something, and I just put Magic guarding the other team's power forward. He can, he can play power forward in defense. A good speed, decent lateral quickness. But, like, his best position on defense is, is power forward for Magic. So, um, yeah. Like, there's a reason why, if you remember back pre-position locks, Magic at power forward used to, like, be a, a really, really common thing that people ran. Because that was his, his best position in my team. But, uh, yeah. So, now we got number one. And uh, no surprises for guessing that Rudy Gay is number one. No surprises for guessing how freaking good this card is. Like, he is... I Ty called him the best player in the game on current gen. And Ty knows a lot more about current gen than me. So I'm going to... Uh, I'll agree with him on that. But you're paying 75k for a top 10 card in the game on both gens. Like, I use him on next and he's still, for me, my best player. He, I think he's my best player on next gen. 6-8 is the biggest lie in the game. The biggest lie in the game is that this player is six for eight. He's at least six ten. His player Mel makes him at least six ten, and he's got a seven three wingspan. Um, he's got all these half badges, like slithery, unstrippable. Yeah, a lot of them are inside scoring badges, which people don't particularly like, but still, 
Got my catch and shoot corner specialist. He's got gold clamps, gold interceptor. He's got blinders. He's got downhill as well. Half quick for his step. The only thing is you're gonna have to give him rebound chaser. You're gonna have to give him like handles for days and stuff. Like there are some stuff that he's lacking, but he's got a 95 driving, like 86 three ball, 86 ball handle. His, he's also got shifty, one of the best releases in the game. So he's got quick, not shifty. He's got quick dribble style, one of the best releases in the game, and also has the best behind the back in the game. His card right here is just, he's, he's the best, he's perfect six. He's perfect six. Elite defense, super fast, good lateral quickness. Again, he's got even better lateral quickness than Draymond and comparable defensive stats to Draymond except for interior. You can play him at the three, you can play him at the four. I prefer playing him at the four because... I just prefer playing him there. One of the best shot blockers in the game. I don't care if his rating's 80. The amount of ridiculous blocks he gets out of nowhere. He's had games where he's gotten four blocks from me. And you guys saw against Sam the Ruler, he got three huge blocks all in the fourth quarter. He's probably the best player I have in my squad. Like, my team is... My team's pretty nice. Like, I like my team. He's my best player. I got some good players here. Rudy Gay's the best. And I have not used him on current gen. So if he happens to be better on current gen, he is on next gen, like Ty says. He really just is the damn best. So anyway, yeah, that's pretty much it, lads. They are, in my opinion, the best players for under 100k. Obviously, a few honorable mentions. But the 10 are Rudy Gay, Penny Hardaway, Scotty Pippen, Andrew Wiggins, Magic Johnson, Dr. J, Dolph Shays, George Mikan, Draymond Green, and Diamond James Harden. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.